Russia produces artillery shells about three times faster than Ukraine's allies. Russia produces artillery shells about three times faster than Ukraine's Western allies and they cost four times less. This is evidenced by an analysis shared by Sky News. The calculations by consultancy Bain and Company highlight the serious challenge facing Ukraine's armed forces as they rely on ammunition supplies from the US and Europe to fight the Russian Federation. It is noted that the full-scale war between Ukraine and the occupiers was described from the very beginning as a battle by fire due to the number of artillery shells used. This has prompted the Allies to seek to increase production at their factories, but their capacity still lags behind Russia's despite a combined economic power that vastly outstrips Moscow. According to Ukrainian soldiers on the front line, for every shot they fire, the invading forces can fire about five shells in response. To combat this problem, the defense forces have learned to ensure that every attack is successful. Often with one or two or three shells, we can completely destroy a target, said Senior Lieutenant Konstantin, commander of an artillery battery in the 57th Brigade, which is fighting a new Russian incursion into the Kharkov region. According to him, the Ukrainian armed forces still need additional support. This is necessary to effectively deter the Russian Federation so that every meter of land they try to seize costs them hundreds of lives. The study found that Russian factories are likely to produce or refurbish about 4.5 million artillery shells this year, compared with a total production of about 1.3 million shells in European countries and the United States. At the same time, the cost of producing a 155 millimeter projectile from NATO countries is about $4,000 per unit, while Russia produces a 152 millimeter projectile for $1,000. Another problem is that during exercises, our military is forced to simply pretend to fire weapons. In fact, they are using ammunition for the first time on the battlefield. We don't have enough N law and we need more. We would like to thank our Western partners for their help. But if possible, we would be very grateful if they could provide more ammunition to NATO, said a soldier with the call sign Bolt, which trained new soldiers of the reconnaissance battalion of the 5th Brigade. Baltic states establish drone wall to protect borders from Russia. The Baltic states have agreed to establish a drone wall to protect their external borders with the help of UAVs. Agne Bilotite, Lithuanian Interior Minister, said this. According to Lithuanian public broadcaster LRT, Bilotite made his statement after a meeting with her counterparts from two other Baltic countries, Poland, Finland and Norway in Latvia. This is a completely new thing, a drone wall stretching from Norway to Poland, and the goal is to use drones and other technologies to protect our borders against provocations from unfriendly countries and to prevent smuggling, Agne Bilotite said. The countries will use UAVs to monitor border areas to create a drone wall and apply counter-drone systems to intercept drones from hostile countries used for smuggling or provocations. Bilotite stated that Lithuania has developed plans to enhance the protection of its border using drones. She emphasized that the Lithuanian State Border Guard Service recently established a UAV unit and is acquiring additional UAVs and counter-drone systems. Now the countries will assess what homework they need to do and then, with the help of experts, national authorities will develop a plan to implement the creation of a drone wall. The Lithuanian minister couldn't specify when the idea would be implemented but noted that the drone wall could be funded by the EU adding that the ministers also agreed to organize joint evacuation exercises in participating countries. We agree to hold regional drills to ensure the evacuation of the population, to see how our institutions are prepared to work, to interact with each other, what our capacity is to accommodate people, what the capacity of other countries is, whether they are ready to receive a certain number of our people. The interior minister said, we still have a lot of questions. We need to look at all those algorithms. Drills would be very valuable as we would look at things, evaluate them, and we would strengthen our preparedness. Bilatite added, the Baltic countries are wary of Russian aggression. Russia uses African cores in its offensive on Vovchansk 
in Ukraine. Russia deployed units of the African Corps alongside regular Russian forces and Storm Z units during their offensive on Vovchansk in the northern Kharkiv region, according to the UK Ministry of Defence. The Russian Ministry of Defence's African Corps, created in December 2023, consists of more than 2,000 regular soldiers and officers, as well as experienced mercenaries, many of whom previously served with the Wagner Group. According to British intelligence, the African Corps units were likely previously deployed in Syria, Libya, Burkina Faso and Niger. The Russian Ministry of Defense almost certainly redeployed detachments from the Africa Corps to the Ukrainian border during April 2024 in preparation for this offensive. It is highly likely that Russia is reinforcing its war on Ukraine with resources previously assigned to Africa, the UK Ministry of Defense wrote. Recall Russia's economic, diplomatic and military interests in Africa have been increasing in the past few years. Since 2017, Russia has used Wagner as a low-cost strategy to increase its foothold in Africa. Wagner's former leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, was Russia's main man in Africa. A month before he died in a plane crash on the 23rd of August 2023, Prigozhin was spotted at the Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg, indicating Moscow's use of the mercenary group for its military influence in Africa. After Prigozhin's death, President Vladimir Putin admitted his government had funded the paramilitary group. Russia's move to create the Africa Corps can be analysed from two possibly overlapping perspectives. First, by controlling Africa Corps, Moscow could be trying to avoid past mistakes. Wagner's autonomy and power led to a supremacy battle between Prigozhin and senior Russian defence officials, which boiled over into an unsuccessful insurrection that saw Wagner soldiers marching on Moscow in June 2023. Second, aligning Africa Corps operations with Russia's foreign policy, security interests and international commitments could be part of the country's long-term military strategy in Africa. 